Hey everybody, I'm Sasha White. And I'm MK Fain, and this is Identity Crisis. So Sasha, I wanted to ask you a question. Have you ever been in a pronoun circle? Ooh, well, I have been in circles where we had to say our pronouns. I don't know if that counts as a full-on <laughs> pronoun circle, but yes. <laughs> So this is something I hear constantly from young people today, and I have been in my fair share of pronoun circles all the time where you always have to introduce, hi, I'm MK Fain, I'm she, her, and my favorite ice cream is chocolate. And, and this has just become, I know, so problematic. <laughs> uh, but this has just become such a normal part of, I think, kids' lives these days is having to say their pronouns and nobody knows how to handle it. Like if you're gender critical, you don't know how to handle it. But honestly, if you're just like new to the whole gender identity thing, a lot of times you don't know how to handle it. If you identify as trans and you're not out yet, like you don't know how to handle it, what are you supposed to say? It's such a conundrum. Yeah, absolutely. It's the type of thing where, you know, people will sometimes try to just not say any pronouns. And I've heard of stories well that were, where they will be asked after, you know, to follow up, oh, you didn't say your pronouns. So then they can't even just get, cause that's how I've always gotten away with it in the past is just not say that part of the introduction. And I've never been bothered, yeah. about it, but sometimes it happens that you then get bothered about it. You know, I am really glad that you said that because I just saw a story on Spinster the other day of a young detransitioner who's in college. And she was on a, a Zoom class, because I guess that's how school is these days. And her professor said that everyone should introduce themselves with their name, their major, and their pronoun. And when it came to her, she skipped her pronoun. And then the professor did exactly that and said, oh, by the way, what are your pronouns? Did you skip that on purpose? It was so awkward. But I think that this young woman that posted about this on Spinster handled it super well because what she actually did was she said, that question actually makes me really uncomfortable. It brings up some bad memories for me. Hmm. So that really apparently totally changed the professor's tune because then this young woman had a class with the same professor again later on in the week. And that time the professor not only did not ask for pronouns and intros, but the professor also apologized to her and said that she didn't realize that pronouns could be a contentious topic and she wasn't going to do it again. Hmm. That is pretty interesting. Um, I'm really glad to hear the professor was receptive. I do wonder if the professor was only so receptive because it appeared that this was just a new facet of the gender ideology that you have to go along with. But regardless, it sounded like a good outcome. What's so cool about it to me is that by her, this one person skipping her pronouns that actually turned into this whole thing where then the whole next class and every other class this professor teaches after this, theoretically won't have to share their pronouns and be in that position. So this one woman just skipping her pronouns and like, yeah, it got awkward that she then had to explain herself, but it actually had a really positive impact. So I think that's a great way to handle it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, have you ever, um, you know, said something or spoken up when it happened to you? Yeah. So there definitely have been times, especially like early on when I was first gender critical and I didn't know how to exert like this, uh, my discomfort in this situation. I didn't know what to say. I didn't think that I could skip it. I thought it would be super obvious. So early on, I did say my pronouns are she, her. Mm -hmm. um, but then I kind of started slowly moving towards like exerting myself a little bit more each time. And so then I would say like, I don't care what pronouns. And that, you know, that was sort of a mixed bag because sometimes people would think, oh, are you non-binary? <laughs> um, which was not what I was aiming for. But at least I wasn't like saying, like I wasn't really taking part in it. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I started just skipping saying my pronouns altogether. Um, and mo I pretty much never was asked about it. And I think that the occasional time that someone did ask, I, I remember I was at like a tech meetup and someone said, uh, oh, what were your pronouns, by the way? And then I just said, I don't care about pronouns. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of it. That's a perfect answer. Um, by the way, should we just explain why we have a problem with saying our pronouns for people who That's might- That's a good idea. No? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, Sasha, why do you have a problem with saying your pronouns? Well, because I am pronoun phobic. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Um, well, because for one thing, the pronouns that are used for a person, like for me, people would use she, her. That's something that other people say. It's not something that I say. I don't typically say, you know, she, her about myself. I mean, you know, if I'm in a very godlike mood, I guess I might. But um, <laughs> when you give your preferred pronouns, you are compelling other people's speech. You are telling them what words they can say. This is not the same as just saying, I am gay, I am lesbian, I'm bisexual gender identity with different pronouns. This is something where you are requiring someone else to change the way they perceive reality and the way they speak. That is the fundamental problem with the pronouns in language, but that doesn't begin to touch on the feminist issue with the pronouns. Do you wanna maybe explain a bit about that? Yeah, well, I kind of see two additional issues with it. The first is that when you, are normalizing this idea that you need to need to say your pronouns for someone else to know what your sex is, then this is really just enforcing gender identity ideology and making it the norm, normalizing it. And that's what the ex express goal is of the trans activists. And by putting pronouns and bios of people who everyone knows their sex, like the vice president of the United States of America right now has pronouns in her bio. Everybody knows that Kamala Harris is a woman. That's like her thing right now is that she's a woman. She doesn't need to put pronouns in her bio. But what the purpose of that is, is to normalize gender identity ideology, to normalize the idea that you cannot know someone's gender identity or what they will also call sex without asking them. And so by even participating in the pronouns, like, you know, if someone was going to call you she and you asked to be called she, you're not like really changing their speech, but what you are doing is normalizing that system. And in addition, another problem that I have with it is in a lot of spaces where women are already disadvantaged, being forced to highlight your sex can work against you psychologically, both for yourself because of stereotype threat, and in, in addition can you know, heighten people's awareness that you are a female and therefore change how they might treat you. For example, sometimes I use the name MK Fane instead of my full name, Mary Kate Fane. And I like that MK is a little bit more androgynous. If I'm just writing an article, depending on, you know, if my picture is associated with it or not, it's not clear right away if that person's a man or a woman. And, you know, lots of writers do this like JK Rowling. And, you know, this is a pretty common thing that women do. In tech, it's a huge problem is you know, someone will send an email as a woman and then they get no response. Their male colleague sends the email and gets like a great response. By being forced to put your pronouns in every communication you do, you're essentially forced to remind everyone constantly, I am a woman, treat me lesser. Wow. Um, gosh, you just reminded me of a tweet that said, every time a non-binary woman asks to be treated just like a person and not like a woman, she implies that women are less than people. Now, that was a tweet that I retweeted several months ago. And it was one of the four tweets that my boss read to me when I asked why I was fired. Wow. Um, yeah, I also have a, my name is um, a boy's name in Russia, largely. So oh. that's something for me is my name doesn't give away my sex either right away. Yeah. And so by saying, hi, I'm a she, her, then you've just raised awareness of your sex in a space where you didn't necessarily have to. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great point. So yeah. what other advice might we give to people who are faced with this? The scenario that you read was pretty amazing that this person had this I mean, they were brave. They were just, they, they, they yeah. said something kind of off the cuff and then they followed up with it. Um, but not everyone has that kind of history where they can say like, oh, that brings up some dark memories for me. For me, it doesn't. I don't have that past and I wouldn't want to um, fabricate something like that because the point is yeah. more authentic, not less. 
So what might you do if you're being pressured? Like, what are some lines that you might, you had a good one. You said, I don't do pronouns, right? Was that what it was? I said, I don't care about pronouns. Yeah. I like and that. I think that this is kind of a, a natural part of learning to exert your boundaries. And this is something that I think is just really hard for young women in general. And so one thing I will will say kind of across the board is I think if you can get better at standing up for yourself on anything, maybe it's, for example, you don't like tomatoes and, you know, you, your friend always puts tomatoes in your salad or whatever. If you can just be better about saying, oh, actually, I don't like tomatoes, then that is actually a step towards being able to say, I don't care about pronouns or I would rather not share my pronouns or yeah. any of these things because it's the same exact skill of just standing up for yourself. It is. It's almost a muscle that you need to exercise. And when you, yeah. ex it's the, it's the standing up for yourself. It's the telling the truth muscle. And it's not that easy to tell the truth. You know, we no. like to think of ourselves as honest people, but everybody lies and that's okay. Sometimes actually lying is, is the right thing to do, but when you want to learn how to stand up for yourselves, just like you said, you have to start with the little things. You have to tell your friends, oh no, I don't want to go out for drinks because you know I'm, I'm not drinking right now or whatever the case may be. When you go along with those things, it seems small. Like you just say, oh, okay, I'll just do it. It does a little bit of damage to your psyche and that builds up over time and it starts to shift your sense of who controls your life, who's the driver in your life. And if you can yeah. slowly bring that back to you, bring the locus of control back into yourself, you can build that and build towards being able to make those boundaries for the bigger things. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that about lying because honestly, when I was younger, like uh, in my teens and very early 20s, I thought that I was a pathological liar because I would catch myself in social situations answering what I knew the other person wanted to hear instead of answering what was true, even on stuff that was so stupid, like the tiniest little things that really didn't matter. And I did not understand for so long why I was lying about these things. I felt guilty about it. I thought there was something wrong with me. It wasn't until I started learning more about like female socialization and stuff that I realized, oh, I just have a desire to please these people to be pleasant to not let people down to give them what they want like in theory it's a nice thing that I'm trying to do I'm not lying to be cruel but yes being able to like be honest with yourself and therefore then like put forward that honesty it's it is it's so hard and you know what really actually got me to do that was really getting involved in activism where I needed to be honest with people about what I was doing a lot and, you know, there were like specific challenges, like in the vegan community, there would be like the liberation pledge where you would refuse to sit with someone who's eating the bodies of animals and you would have to tell them why, like, I'm not going to sit with you while you eat because I'm uncomfortable being around someone eating animals. And that is a super hard thing to say because like that, is, it just feels so cruel and unnecessary to say it like that. And you know, I'm not saying that everyone needs to go vegan, but what you can do is you can challenge yourself to if, like find these little things that you catch yourself always like lying about to please people and make a challenge to yourself to like, I'm not going to lie about that anymore. And I feel pretty confident that that will translate to the pronoun thing because it's pretty much what happened for me over time. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. There's this sense of it's easier and it's better to tell small lies to tell people what they want to hear it makes the conversation go easier it makes people like me or you think that makes people like you mm -hmm. taking the risk of being authentic is a risk but what's cool about risks is that when you do them and then you live you feel good you get a rush yeah and that builds you up that makes you stronger as opposed to weaker. When you're telling those little conversational white lies, it weakens you. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you think you've pleased those other people, but it's you who has to settle and live with yourself. And to have someone else displeased with you is actually not as bad as when you're mad at yourself. And when you have yeah. to sit with that, um, you know, I've betrayed myself in some way. So- and you know Something else I, I'll say about it is I think that a lot of times, specifically with the pronoun thing, people don't think 
that much of it if you don't say what's expected. I think a lot of times we're really scared. If I skip my pronouns, then they're gonna think I'm a turf. If I skip my pronouns, then that's gonna spiral into this whole other thing. And in most cases, like it's just not. In the case of a professor, especially in these like sort of more casual one-off relationships where you're meeting someone for one day, one night, and then like you're probably not gonna speak to them again, then probably most people are just going to think, oh, she forgot to say it, or oh, maybe she didn't want to share it. And I think that, you know, most, like, we always assume that people are going to think so much more about us than people actually do. You know, we assume everyone is always thinking about us all the time and analyzing our lives the way that we do. Honestly, no one cares. <laughs> like, no one cares about you in your life. <laughs> right. You wouldn't care what people thought of you if you knew how seldom they did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then just we care about you though. We care. We care. <laughs> and we're, we're watching. <laughs> we're not like other girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then just to add a small addendum, because I am also an advocate for people protecting themselves. So mm -hmm. like how I said, sometimes lying is good. Um, you know, you can think of the most extreme examples. I'm going to lie to the Nazi that there's not a Jew in my basement. Okay. That's an obvious scenario where lying is good. If you yeah. do need to do this to protect yourself, I am not against that. And I am not advocating that you put your job on the line or your anything else that feels that feels risky to you. Um, but if you do go along with it, you you might have a sense of disease in your uh, unease in yourself after. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I think that, you know, you have to do what you have to do to get by. But if you're already at the point where you're asking, how do I get out of this pronoun circle? Then th this is the answer for you, I think, yeah. is to start exerting yourself a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Find that honesty. So I yeah. think we can wrap it up there on this episode, MK. Um, thank you guys again for tuning in. We have new episodes every Monday. If you want to submit a question, you can email us at submit at identitycrisis.xyz and be sure to follow Pleabody and 4W everywhere, all over the internet.